This is from my other book, In the Days of the Salem Witch Trials. This sums up the whole thing. Uh, the Salem witchcraft panic began with personal fear, grew with neighborhood suspicion, and then spread through the region fueled by the Times' tensions. The idea of a witch conspiracy was always unusual, but a possible attack from hell seemed less surprising then when the people's religion, economy, and even their lives were at risk from so many earthly threats. Outside invasion from Canada was one of them. Salem villages, in addition, were quarreling with other towns about boundaries, with Salem over local rule, and with each other about what pay had been promised to their minister. Throughout the spring and summer of 1692, about 60 people appeared to be bewitched. Not all of them t testified in court, but six bewitched people actually died. About 150 of more than 200 witch suspects were arrested. Most of them lived in Salem Village and other parts of Salem, nearly as many in Andover, and the rest were scattered throughout three counties. About 10 other people were accused in Western Connecticut, far from Salem. Suspects ranged from wealthy to impoverished, from saintly to cantankerous. Most were older women. Two of the executed men were apparently wife beaters. Some suspects were noticeably eccentric, but so were some of the bewitched. A few supposed witches practiced folk magic, but so did some of the accusers. Some were never arrested at all, and one man taken in for questioning was released. Many confessed, confessed, while others died rather than lie. It was all a tangle of confusion. But even such a hidden work of darkness as the 1692 trials, people felt, had to have some lesson in it, at least. Eventually, even those who had most trusted spectral evidence realized how contradictory it was. They slowly understood that panic must not be allowed to let fear and resentment judge unproven acts. Their real pain and fear did not mean their accusations were true. Twenty people had been killed and others died of disease in jail because this had been forgotten. But disasters caused by even good intentions still required an apology, and the sooner the better, and some kind of payment to patch up damaged lives. Together, the public fast in 1697, which apologized for it, the reversal of the tainter in 1711, which removed the onus on the people who had been formally condemned, and the restitution of payments in 1712 were only the third official apology in the history of Western witchcraft trials. Nevertheless, the Salem cases became a symbol for all witchcraft trials, even when other larger scares were forgotten. Understanding the events in the context of their times and realizing that the people involved were not just cardboard heroes and villains is a reminder that all such tragedies begin with ordinary people like us. Thank you.